everyone, welcome to this edition of History with Sai. In this episode, I want to talk about some of the cities that we've mentioned in past programs, just to give you a little bit more of a historical background to some of the events that we've already covered. For now, we'll take a look at some of the earliest cities of ancient Sumer. In future programs, we'll cover other cities of old Babylonia and Assyria. So, let's begin. We'll start first with Eridu. According to the Sumerian king list, Eridu was the first city and home of the first king of the world, Alulip. The patron deity of Eridu was Enki, the god of fresh waters and wisdom, who was known to help out mankind, much like Prometheus in Greek mythology. Archaeologists have determined that Enki's shrine at Eridu was built and rebuilt many times over the centuries, with the earliest level dating to around 5,500 BCE. This not only predates the arrival of the Sumerians, but also makes it the oldest temple that we know about. Though the first temple was likely less than 20 square meters and had little more than a small altar, by 2100 BCE, a large ziggurat, which is a type of step pyramid temple, was built over the original structure. Probably due to the shifting course of the Euphrates River over the centuries, sometime around the mid-2nd millennium BCE, Eridu was mostly abandoned. Still, it's held its place in Sumerian and Babylonian lore as one of the oldest and most sacred places in the world. One of the most well-known and remarkable cities of the ancient world, Uruk may have been the first really large urban center in history. In fact, it's from this city that the modern country of Iraq gets its name. According to Sumerian tradition, Uruk was established by a king named Meskia Gashur, perhaps as early as 5000 BCE. However, Uruk's period of greatest growth and prosperity came in the 4th millennium BCE, when it grew into something resembling a metropolis. It had palaces, gardens, workshops for artisans, housing blocks for its growing population, and of course, many temples. The most famous of which was Iana, the temple dedicated to the goddess of love, Inanna. In the Akkadian language, her name is Ishtar. Uruk's other claims to fame? Well, it's where writing was first developed, or at least where examples of it have been uncovered. The city was also home to the hero Gilgamesh, star of the most famous piece of ancient Sumerian and later Babylonian literature, the Epic of Gilgamesh. Though going through ups and downs, the city surprisingly had a great deal of longevity. Though by the first millennium BCE, its glory days were behind it, Uruk was still inhabited and even prosperous during the Neo-Babylonian, Persian, Seleucid, Parthian, and even Sasanian periods. Its decline occurred around 500, and by 630, it's believed to have been pretty much abandoned. Though today in ruins, Uruk's contribution to the world cannot be understated. Next, we come to the great city of Ur. Like Uruk, this city is steeped with history and was one of the most important cities of ancient Sumer and Babylonia for a few thousand years. It's also the terrestrial home of the moon god, Nana, who in Akkadian is called Sin. At one time, when the ancient Persian Gulf was much more inland, it was a thriving seaport, and this made it a major trade hub. Inhabited since at least 4500 BCE, the city's rise to prominence began around 2750 BCE with two of its early kings, Messanipada and his son, Eanipada. It was during this time that Ur's rule expanded to conquer many of its neighbors, including the wealthy and powerful cities of Kish and Lagash. Ur's initial period of power and prosperity ended around 2300 BCE with its conquest by the Akkadian warlord and king, Sargon of Akkad, who later on was known as Sargon the Great. However, after the fall of the Akkadian Empire, Ur once again became the center and capital of the great Neo-Sumerian Empire ruled by what historians call the Third Dynasty of Ur. Beginning with Ur-Namu and continuing with his successors Shulgi, Amarsin, Shusin, and the last Neo-Sumerian king, Ibisin, 
the empire revived Sumerian culture and controlled large areas of the ancient Middle East from the Mediterranean to the borders of what is now Eastern Iran. The most famous monument from this time was Ur's Great Ziggurat, the ruins of which are still visible and honestly quite impressive even to this day. Despite the empire's eventual demise due to a series of factors, Ur maintained its position as an important center of pilgrimage for worshippers of the moon god, Nana. However, with the course of the Euphrates River slowly changing, the city's agricultural production declined, and by around 450 BCE, the city's residents had largely abandoned it for greener pastures elsewhere. In terms of holiness, there were few, if any, cities that compared with Nippur. Like Eridu and Uruk, its foundations also seem to go back to the 6th millennium BCE. Being a religious center, Nippur is not known to have ever had a ruling dynasty of its own, and so officially, it was politically neutral. However, no king of ancient Sumer and later Babylonia could be considered legitimate unless he supported the city with funds and temple renovations, or at least made a pilgrimage to Nippur. Nippur's patron deity was Enlil, whose Iker, or mountain house, was possibly the most holy temple in all of Sumer. Along with the Ikur, there were several other major temples, especially to the goddess Inanna. Kish was another old and once powerful city of ancient Sumer, whose patron deity was the warrior god, Zababa. According to the Sumerian king list, it's the place where the first royal dynasty arose following the event known as the Great Flood. While the king list gives the names of many early kings of Kish, only two, Enmibagarezi and his son, Aga, have been somewhat confirmed by archaeological evidence. One fascinating fact is that according to the Sumerian king list, the establishment of King's Third Dynasty was a woman named Kubaba. It's actually quite an anomaly, because all of the other ancient Sumerian rulers that we know of were men. Speaking of rulers, arguably the most famous king or emperor of ancient Mesopotamia, that is Sargon the Great, was born in the city of Kish. The city was also known for its scholarly tradition and as a center of learning throughout the ancient world for centuries until its eventual decline and abandonment in the 5th or 6th century. Next, we come to the city-state or kingdom of Lagash, which was actually made up of a trio of cities, Lagash, Girsu, and Nina Sarara. There are few cities of the ancient Sumerian world that are historically as significant as Lagash. Located not far from ancient Sumer's fluid border with Elam, Lagash was a conduit for trade between ancient Mesopotamia and the East. This of course made it extremely wealthy and allowed it to expand and dominate many of the other cities of ancient Sumer. Lagash's patron deity was Ningirsu, the god of farming who was also a warrior god. His main temple was in neighboring Girsu, which we'll get to shortly. One of Lagash's most famous early rulers was Urnanchi, who is believed to have ruled around 2500 BCE. He's credited with numerous accomplishments, including the construction of many of the city's temples, public squares, and its great defensive walls. His grandson, Ianatum, was also really famous, perhaps even more so. Though, like his grandfather, he built many temples and expanded Lagash's network of canals, he's best known for being a great warrior and bringing the city-state's great rival, Uma, into submission. This once perennial conflict between the two is depicted on the famous Stele of the Vultures, currently in the Louvre. Ianatum even claimed to have conquered many cities of Elam to the east, technically making Lagash the international superpower of its day. The good times though didn't last, and around 2340 BCE, Lagash was eventually defeated and more or less destroyed by the king of Umma, Lugal Zagezi. Better days, though, would come for the city under the enlightened king, Gudia. Ruling between 2141 to 2122 BCE, Gudia enriched Lagash and the neighboring city of Girsu after the fall of the Akkadian Empire, making it a great center of Sumerian culture and art. A few decades later, though, Lagash was incorporated into the Neo-Sumerian Empire based in Ur 
after which it ceased to play a significant role in the affairs of the region. About 15 kilometers from Lagash was Girsu, another great center of Sumerian culture. At one time believed to have been part of Lagash, Girsu was in fact distinct and eventually the city's role was primarily a religious one. This is because it was the home of the great temple to the god Ningirsu, the god who aided farmers and overall watched over the land. It's here that the famous Stele of the Vultures was found, along with over 40,000 cuneiform tablets from the city's old archives. In addition, there have been several beautifully carved statues out of diorite of the famous king Gudea that have been found amongst its ruins. The third great urban center of the city-state of Lagash was Nina Serrara. Though Ningirsu was a popular god here, Nina Serrara's patron was the goddess Nanshi. The city's prime was during the early dynastic period under Ianatum, though it also became prosperous during Gudea's reign as king of Lagash. Other than that, not much else is known about the city. Finally, we come to Lagash's great rival, the city of Oma. This was the city of the warrior god, Shara. That god is probably a good fit for the city because we often hear of Oma in Sumerian documents in the context of its perennial conflict with Lagash. This is the city that was defeated by Ianatum of Lagash, only to vanquish Lagash, Girsu, and Nina Serrara several centuries later under Lugal Zagezi. However, after Lugal Zagezi's defeat and the city's conquest by Sargon the Great, Uma more or less falls off the stage of history, and we don't really hear about it after that. So there you have some of the major cities of ancient Sumer during the early dynastic period. These are by no means the only cities. There were other notable ones that occupied the Sumerian world, including Adab, Shurupuk, and several others. However, the ones we went over were arguably the most important and are mentioned the most often in Sumerian and later texts. So this concludes our current list. In future, we'll talk about the other cities, specifically of Old Babylonia and Assyria. Thanks again for tuning in. I hope you learned something, and if you did, please like the video and subscribe to the channel. Hope to see you next time. Take care.